All right, I get it. You know, you want to get the most FPS possible in your games, and you want to beat your friends in a bench score so you can prove that your AMD powered PC is better. And you've tried everything in the book, so you tried closing all your apps, and you're just a little bit, you know, away from getting to their level of performance. So you've tried overclocking. You've overclocked your RAM with a bit of a performance gain, but now it's time to overclock your AMD Ryzen CPU. So it's going to sort as a bit of a guide to help people that are overclocking their CPUs. So we're going to do it in Ryzen Master. But you are going to need a bit of patience, of course. So you can't just turn on and be like, all right, you know, it's on right now. Let's install Ryzen Master and get those overclocks and get that performance. Yeah. Actually, no, you want to first go into your BIOS. So I'm going to mash delete here. Mm, there we are. And you want to actually relax some of the settings that Ryzen Master and your motherboard automatically sets. So you can push your CPU a bit further if you need to. Alright, so once you're in your BIOS, you want to go into advanced mode. So just hit F7 here. Move over to AI Tweaker and go down to where it says... Uh, no, focus. Alright, DIGI and VRM. Once you're in here, you want to go to CPU current capability and set that to uh, what, as much as it can go to. And SOC current capability to 130, so that's as much as it can go to. This basically means that it will draw 30% more current than it otherwise would. Oh, come on, focus. All right, yeah. So draw 30% more current than it otherwise would. That doesn't mean that it's just going to push that much more, just automatically. That's... It means it's going to push 30% more, it's going to push more current in this case, if we actually start asking for it. So if we start pushing those voltages and we start pushing those clocks where we would actually need that much more power, then it will draw more. Yeah, next you probably want to have these on extreme. Uh, it just kind of gives it that a bit of extra push and kind of helps out more with uh, power delivery. So it's more smoother for your, you know, it it just makes it easier for your CPU and more stable. And that's about it for the little things that you have to do in your BIOS. So you can just save and exit, you know, it's just quick and easy stuff. Save and exit, alright, it should just reboot. I probably should have already mentioned this, but your motherboard could also help with overclocking. It really depends on its um, VRMs and how well it can actually cool itself and its um, power delivery and all that stuff. And your cooler is really important. Alright, we're booting up fine. Your cooler is really important because they're sort of similar to Intel. When you have cooler, when you have a cooler CPU that is, you can actually push it a lot further than if it was hotter. So like say I was overclocking at 90 degrees and I was overclocking at 70 degrees, the, C, uh, the CPU being at 70 and 90 degrees. The 70 degree CPU would actually, oh, uh, flicker. The 70 degree CPU would actually be able to go a bit further than 90 degrees because it would be more stable and just better, all right? And uh, now we're logging in. All right, so once you're in uh, Windows and stuff, you want to go over to Google Chrome or whatever web browser that you use. Go to AMD's website. AMD, I mean, just, just type in AMD. And then you want to go over to processor, processor, how do you say it? Desktop. It really depends what you have. I have Ryzen. I have an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 in my system. And you want to go over to support. Oh, wait, hang on. You probably need to go over to pro. Whatever, it's fine. Just go over to here. Click on processors. AMD Ryzen. AMD Ryzen 5 desktop, and I have an AMD Ryzen 5 3600, so I'm going to click on that, submit. Uh, if you have a different one, you can just go on that, and I would not like to do some feedback. So you click on Windows 10 64-bit, and there it says Ryzen Master. So you're going to download it, and then it should just take you through the steps. I already have it, however, so I'm not going to do that again. So this is what you do. You want to load up Ryzen Master. There it is. It should start loading. And press OK. And then you'll be taking this screen. You might not have this graph, it might just be like that. But it's fine, I just have this graph here just then makes it easier for me to 
like sort of tell what stage my CPU is at, like temperature and the clocks and stuff. Wow, my CPU is already boosting and stuff. Okay. So once you're in here, you want to actually go over to actually. You might have to start a new profile. Yeah, sorry. You will have to start a new profile, and I'll just delete this one because I'll have to uh, discard. That didn't discard it. Oh no. What would I do? All right, so uh, just a bit of an error there. But um, you might be looking at something like this. So the way that I do it, I sort of have it, I click on this little icon here, which kind of like locks all the calls to like move at the same time. That's the wrong one. I'm an idiot. Yeah, my mistake. You're supposed to have it on the green one. I doofed up. So now all the calls, as you can see, are going to be moving at the same time. So if I just set it to that much, all the calls will be set to 600 megahertz. Don't know why you want to put it out there. Probably won't be stable. But yeah, if I know if I want to go all the way to like 4.6 gigahertz, all the calls will be running at 4.6 gigahertz. You might see this little golden triangle here. That means that is the best core, the fastest core in the system. And you'll see this other star here that's not in gold, so just in silver. That means it's the second fastest core for your CPU or for your CCX. Um, so this is what I would do. I would, first of all, go in little increments. So 100 megahertz, that's not very really little, but I'd go 100 megahertz and I'd push the voltage up a bit, but not too much where it starts overheating the CPU. That'd be bad. You, you don't you don't want to put that uh, your CPU really high temps for, you know, I just mentioned before. So I'd put the voltage up like eh, about, 1.3185 1 press apply and then to actually test if it's stable we need to hit it with a very heavy load so we're going to use Cinebench R20 and it's going to go a bit to load right there it is and you want to press not single core I mean unless you are running, at, running for single core stuff then yeah hit that but we want to do all core so we're going to do the all core test and We'll go back to when it's done. Okay, so the test just finished. And the one in bright orange right there, we got a 3,501 score. And the one in dark, the dark orange one right there, I, that was at stock pretty much. So I just left it to its normal thing. And we got about 3,094. Okay, so that's a substantial increase. I think I might have not done something in the BIOS for that little one, that the darker orange one. But it's alright, okay. So we can sort of use this as our baseline for overclocks, the 3501. So we're going to pop over to Ryzen Master again. And I had this graph open, so I can correctly see, yep, all my cores were at 4300 megahertz. And the highest, tem uh, the highest the temperatures that we got were pretty much at 77, 76 degrees. Pretty much, yeah. So we can go back over here, and we can actually push it a bit further. I'd say about uh, three thousand and fifty. I'd go in fifty megahertz increments. Uh, I might give it a bit more voltage, like uh, one point three two five. Yep, there we go. Apply, and then run the test again. Then we can just keep seeing over and over again. Alright, so the test just finished again, and let's see what we got. So, oh, focus, alright. So we got a 3,538, so that's a bit of a performance increase, actually. Um, for some reason, it's actually the 3,509 score, or one score, actually. It's supposed to be in dark orange, but I don't think there's something wrong. I might have done something in the settings. But, yeah, that's actually pretty much it. So you can actually just sort of mess around with this again. But, of course, you know, don't just have unrealistic expectations. Like, just go, All right, yeah, let's just go 5 gigahertz. You know, you want to do it slowly. You want to, like, slowly step it up so you can see where your CPU is actually stable. You don't want just to, like, launch it forward and then it's unstable. And you're like, okay, somewhere in there. You want to kind of, like, take it steps up. So it's kind of easier for you to figure that out. And same with the voltage as well. If you're getting high temps... You might want to actually try undervolting it, so you want to try and uh, go down a bit. Uh, I've already made a profile of the, some of the highest that I could get, and I got 4.4 gigahertz on 1.23 volts. That is 
pretty good, honestly. And for gaming, especially, it really helps. Like, it gives me an extra 7, F 7 FPS, I'd say, in games. So, this is a little help for you all. Trying to, oh, wow. Well, okay, I guess it just crashed then, alright? Well, just, you know, why, why not crash while I'm just making a video and all? But, yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you like this video, then like it. And if you like what we do around here, we know we're uploading more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe. We have um, a new video coming up about overclocking your graphics card with MSI Afterburner. So you want to subscribe with notifications with that. And um, that's all from me, and I'll see you in the next video.